As a scholar main, sometimes I like to exercise what I call healer privilege. If I'm doing a dungeon or a fun run and I see a non-lethal attack coming my way, sometimes I'll make the calculated decision to just stand in it. And then I'll let AOs heal me up or use an off-TCD heal, and I'll just keep on DPSing. And I consider that one of my rights as a healer. Now, that means I am more likely to stand in the fire as a healer than I am when I'm playing other roles. And that got me thinking. You know how insurance companies fund studies to predict how likely you are to get in an accident based on your demographics, such as age and location? Well, we could do the same sort of thing for Final Fantasy using all of the log data that's been uploaded to FF Logs. So, using the FF Logs API, I went ahead and I analyzed hundreds of thousands of fights so that I could figure out which jobs, which regions, and which data centers are most likely to stand in the fire. In particular, I wanted to see who is most likely to stand in the fire for the Dancing Green fight. Now, let me know in the comments if any of this surprises you or if any of this is just totally obvious, but either way, I found it interesting and I hope you will as well. Now, there are three mechanics in the Dancing Green fight that I'm looking at. All three of them are individual mechanics, meaning if you mess up, you have no one to blame but yourself. I'm also ignoring fails after the first death, so we're not counting fails from people intentionally throwing the pipe. The first mechanic is the snap and twist. When the boss casts it, you look at the cast to see the number of snaps. You then stand on one side for that many snaps, then take one step to the other side for the twist. To execute this properly, all you have to do is take a single step at the right time. It doesn't get much easier than that. The second mechanic is Funky Floor. The floor will light up like a chessboard with alternating tiles doing damage to anyone standing inside. All you have to do is move between adjacent tiles each time they alternate. This mechanic is however slightly complicated by the fact that there are other things happening simultaneously which require players to move around the room. The third mechanic is Let's Dance, which is my personal favorite mechanic of the fight. Eight frogs will appear in the front of the room and point in a direction. The boss will then do a half room cleave in those directions sequentially, so it's a lot like Dance Dance Revolution or other rhythm games. Players just have to move around so that they're stepping on the correct side of the room for each cleave. And to better incentivize players to do the mechanic correctly, if you do it perfectly, you get a perfect group buff that boosts your damage significantly or fills your limit gauge if everyone did it right. Now then, let's look at which jobs are the best and worst at these dance moves. Overall, across all realms, both normal and savage modes, the best job at dancing is... Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is the top dancer with an average of 0.22 fails per fight. We can see that the Disciples of War tend to be the grooviest dancers for this fight, and of the Disciples of Magic, the Astrologian has the best moves. The dancer is, kind of ironically, the very definition of mid, and down at the bottom of the list, decisively securing the title of worst dancer in the game, the Summoner. Many consider the Summoner to be the most mobile caster, but based on this data, it seems their ethereal flow is maybe a little more ether and a little less flow. With an average of 0.38 fails per fight, they're twice as likely to stand in the fire as the Dark Knight. This difference in dancing skill is likely in part due to the fact that ranged players have to move around more in this fight than melee players. However, if we only look at the Let's Dance mechanic, a mechanic with no real bias towards either melee or ranged, we find that the summoner is still solidly the least groovy job. For comparison's sake, I also analyzed a few other fights and found that while most fights have some bias towards either melee or ranged, the relative ordering of the jobs within their respective roles remains fairly consistent. In Sugar Riot, for example, the melee jobs are the worst at dodging avoidable mechanics, while the ranged jobs are the best. But of the ranged jobs, Summoner and Red Mage still have the highest fail rates, with Astrologian still being the best. So, why does the Summoner seem to have two left feet? Leave your theories in the comments, but personally, I believe what we're seeing is a result of this. Summoners, Warriors, and White Mages have always been considered the easiest jobs of their respective roles, hence newer and less experienced players are more likely to be playing them. Let's also look at the data by region and find out what region is number one in the world. Woo! Japan has the lead, 
followed by Oceania, China, North America, and finally, Europe. Despite having one-third the number of logged dancing green attempts, Japan is significantly groovier than North America. And finally, if you want to know which data center you should be playing on if you want to get paired with the best dancers, well, there probably aren't any real surprises here. In Japan, you should go to Elemental or Mana. In Oceania, you only have one choice. In China, you should go to Fat Cat. In North America, you should go to Aether. And in Europe, you should go to Chaos. Now, if you want your party finder to fill faster, you might want to consider going to Chocobo in China or Light in Europe, but you will see worse dancers. So, there you have it. Tell me in the comments if you were surprised by any of this or if it was all just totally obvious. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it and found it at least mildly interesting. If you watched to the end, give this video a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to watch me stand in the fire live, follow me on Twitch. Thanks for watching.